they made it. Mm -hmm. The Janissary Guards, huh? To Samarkand, and oh, they're kind of like pretending to be purchasing agents. They want to look at the hash oil. It's a new thing, you know. Uh, and uh, oh, they talk your way into. Uh, well, Khan isn't around. He's he's mushing up his melons. Dentures haven't come yet. Uh, and they can't believe their good luck. There's Omar thrashing in the dust, Kushberry juice dripping. Uh, he's so vulnerable right now. Oh, Jesus. You want to kidnap somebody? Wait till they're in trance. Okay, they do the what they do over there. They hood them up, tie them up, gag them, and throw them on a camel. Over the over the camel saddle, Ugh. and get the hell out of Samarkand, huh? Whew. Get in, get out. Nobody gets hurt. <sighs> so happy, uh. and galumph, galumph, galumph. Uh, still pretending to be a Silk Road caravan, kind of lost, uh, because they're taking back roads. Yeah, back to a Baku, and then. Across the Caspian Sea ooh, to um, you know, Shevchenko and back to Istanbul. And oh, they got the prize, huh? So they make a dramatic moment out of it. You know, like uh, Cleopatra, Elizabeth Taylor, uh, Richard Burton just didn't say, Look, here's Liz, have fun. In the film, they rolled her out of a exquisite carpet. So, you know. Surprise, roll, 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 what's this all about? And then there's Liz uh, with Mark Antony, the drooling Liz. Uh, yeah, uh, Richard Burton, he's good at rolling up uh, mm -hmm, Liz. Mm, oh, the paparazzi loved that. Huh? They were both married, just like, and then mm, 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 all during the movie set, yeah. Well, there he was. Uh, whew, jeez. Um, mm -hmm. Well, uh, Sultan Abdul II. Oh, yeah, he, he, had, he had a drool on that one. Omar the Messiah now belongs to him. Okay. Oh, okay. Uh, and thereafter, the incomparable Dustmaster was uh, accorded a luxury suite in the golden cage. Sweets in Topkapi Palace. Yeah, it set them up. Yeah, the hashish, uh, lab. Yeah, sure. Uh, hair, <laughs> whatever you want, okay? Um, so uh, he had it. He could now start giving out the best hashish in the world. No mildew. The Anatolian peasants. <laughs> Pacified. Oh. oh, we're feeling so much better now. Yeah, and those. Uh, well, there was these young Turks uh, in the cafe society of uh, Istanbul, uh, and they were clamoring for something unheard of. Democracy. Yeah, they were all uptight, but Abdul Khan II got them so stoned that they couldn't. Uh, they couldn't get their their heads together to make any kind of hello coordinated attack. They just all spaced out in the cafes, huh? You drink 17 cups of Turkish coffee, you'll need a hookah of the, uh, you know, good stuff. So, and those uh, uh, harem, odalets, women of the rooms, odal means room in Turkish. Yeah, the odalets, they sound a little sophisticated, a little academic here, you know, for a change. Uh, yeah, fellatio, sure. Mm-hmm. Oh, I'm better than her. No, no, hey. Roxana, I said it was my turn. So, yeah, oh, the Abdul. <laughs> I mean, we're talking before breakfast. Uh, wake up call there. Uh, n no, no, no further uh, unnecessary pouting about. Mm-hmm. Well, thus did Omar... Passage of time, 
10 years. Oh, uh, he enjoyed the patronage of Yaga, world's most powerful sultan. Yeah, Abdul. Mm -hmm. 1899, 1909. I mean, we're getting modern here. Omar, at this time, 32 to 42. Oh, okay. Uh, well, even with all that good shit everywhere, um, the Turks, they disposed the Sultan in 1909. Yeah, enough. And the harem girls, they fed through, they had a secret passageway of underground drain pipes that Pasha discovered and noted in his detective notepad. Oh, you'll be hearing about that. Yeah, they had a secret, uh, they, they had a drain pipe escape route into, well, I'm going to tell you exactly, you have to wait a little bit. Uh, they went out, well then, okay, They. what about this, uh, this uh, Dustmaster guy? Uh, well, he escaped. He had to flee too. And um, yeah, he fled on his knees under a huge caftan uh, disguised as a lunatic dwarf. He just need his way out of the top copy, the first gate, gate of salutations. Oh, worked. <laughs> well, that's the, uh, he's so used to being, you know, having patrons. What is he going to do now? No toothless, no Abdul, no harem, no hash lab. Well, he has to, uh, the lost wandering years. Oh, 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 oh. And, uh, yeah, so, um, yeah, follow a trail of Hashishan back from Istanbul and, you know, Tabriz, Mashiach. He went home. You know, you're broke. You have no job. What do you do? You go back to where you came from. And then he just, he was so mellow. He just focused. I mean, no, he had the secret of preservation. But he was always into upgrading, refining. I mean, this, this whole clan was focused on hashish and hashish only. Oh, yeah. So, um, well, Every, it seems there's a pattern here, like every decade, decade with the Toothless, decade with the Sultan. Now, uh, we're into the 1920s, the Roaring Twenties. Well, Omar, he appears in Paris. Uh, yeah, the Twenties in Paris, though. And he enters the Sorbonne University to study Exotic herbology. So he could apply it to his hashi studies. Yeah. And uh, mysticism. Hmm. <laughs> World religions. <laughs> oh, you know. Uh, but he had to have a night job to pay for it all, so he became a gourmet chef in the Paris's most luxury hotel, Hotel de Maurice. You look across from the entrance, there's the Louvre Museum. Yeah, this is the most expensive, too, I had to know. I spent a Friday, Saturday, Sunday in the Hotel Maurice with my hot shot a wife from the Caribbean. We blew through $2,300 just in the hotel yeah. over the weekend. We had our cousins from the slums come up with their electric guitars into our penthouse. and. <clears throat> Yeah, we blew 17 grand in seven weeks, huh? Flying around the world, first class on Singapore Airlines. How did I get my hands on all that money? <laughs> uh, all right, 1930s. See the pattern? New decade, new, new, new major trip. He became a world-class jazz saxophonist. Mm-hmm. Baritone sax, oh yeah. We're talking a Selmer classic, Mark IV. You know, use one of these uh, puppies goes for $10,000 right now. 
Selmer, Paris saxophone, and he wailed. He just blew his mind out, you know. And uh, West Coast, West Coast of the United States. Oh yeah, all the jazz clubs are around there. Oh yeah, improv genius on a Selmer baritone <laughs> sax. Yeah. Well, then he changed his whole trip again. Nineteen forties. Where is he now? I mean, he's a true. He's a global citizen. You can't keep this Balkistani on the farm, can you? Uh, the hashish is already out the gate, in a certain way of speaking. He's he's behind the ashram of Mahatma Gandhi. Doing what? What is he doing? Why is he breaking those clothes on rocks? Oh, he's cleaning them? He's a dobiwala for the saint. Oh, oh good. Uh, 50s, 1950s, back home again. Beloved birthplace, Balk in Oxiania. Oh. And he keeps, yeah, refocus. Always refocusing on hashish. Uh, this time, how to remove the marijuana from the stalk. I mean, all these little things that you do. I mean, you could spend years on just one little uh, aspect of the process. Uh, well, I mean, he's 92 now. Ew. 1959. <laughs> yeah. Uh, yeah, I was 12. Yeah. In the Haight Ashbury with mom and dad there, yeah. Omar the Dustmaster. Well, he becomes nostalgic again. And uh, once, uh, yeah, he, he wanders north. Uh, he wants to have a farewell with the toothless and um, see how his dentures, uh, you know, uh, contributed to the toothless longevity. Chomp, chomp, live longer. Uh, well, there's the oxus. Oh, gray, frothing, chilly, choppy. Well, in 1959, he just walked over the bridge, huh? The Soviet bridge, the Soviet friendship bridge, the Soviet made. Oh. Uh, why did they make it so two tanks could cross it at the same time? Well, Afghanis found out on New Year's Eve. And 1979, they <clears throat> the whole country. Give them a bridge, rip off the country. You know, uh, yeah. Well, on the other shore, now they've got 250 kilometers in front of them to get to Samarkand to, to uh, reunite with the toothless. Uh, oh, well, he just takes a first class train, huh? Oh, Samarkand, yeah. Final farewell. Mm -hmm. So there he shows up at the uh, Samarkand uh, Palace. Oh, now it's a museum. And he just starts talking to all, everybody, you know. He wants to, like, set the record straight. He did not leave. He did not abandon. He didn't abdicate his ass from the toothless. He was kidnapped by Janissary guards from Abdul II over in Istanbul. Well, uh... I mean, he said I was in a trance, and they took advantage of me. Mm -hmm. 